Your future is still something that has yet to be decided. It is still an open question. You go out to the desert, and there are so many spots that have for sale signs and just mesquite trees and sand. What will those areas become? That's the big part of this comprehensive plan. Now, talking locally, we see something. When you go online and you try to figure out how cross crucis is discussed, people on TripAdvisor, for instance, they say, they're talking to each other. And they say, if, and they're giving advice. If you want to live somewhere safe, unique, and beautiful, they said, and I'm quoting, consider the Messiah area, Messiah Park, or Old Messiah. People have fond memories of that. It's funny, when they think of Crucis, a lot of people in El Paso think of Old Messiah. And they say that East Mesa, there's a lot of new development, and it's all very safe, and it's all inexpensive, which is great, um, but it lacks personality. On East Mesilla, everything is box stores and strip malls. And that seems kind of unfortunate, because to, to be honest, most people live in that area. And they should live in an area with character. What we've been talking about this week is how uh, cities uh, like yours have been building these mixed places. Instead of one kind of house and box stores, there is box stores like a CVS or a Walgreens, but it's built within an urban environment. There's main streets. Within a quick walk, there's senior housing or inexpensive apartments for rental for college students. Then come the single family houses, and often they get quite large. And then, because you built densely here, there's green spaces that everyone can share. Um, there's a formula to build it. This is all brand new. That house looks old, but that house was just built within the last five years. These, these new communities are popping up all over the country. This is outside of uh, St. Louis, Newtown St. Charles, Main Street, affordable living, single family houses and sometimes they get really large and luxurious and what they did is they put in a community garden and a windmill that's the space that they share looks old but this is all new construction I like the waters in Montgomery Alabama for their new main street I like the little houses that are close to each other and their cottage courts that they share there's not much of a yard when you're building affordable housing like this but they have spots that people can have in common and it isn't just a white picket fence off back porch, front porch uh, neighborhood. Uh, if you've ever been to Savano outside of Tucson, there they used the adobe style. And, uh, and trees lined with mesquite and Palo Verde, inexpensive living and nice houses. People sit out on the porches, and that's a community for horses. I could go on and on. I just want to tell you that this is possible. Don't let anyone say it can't happen in Crucis because it happened in places that are much poorer, that wish they had the income, the education, the commitment, the median household incomes that you have. In Montgomery, Alabama is one of them. In Montgomery, Alabama built a new community that has a spot within it for the farmer's market. Yeah, farmer's market's downtown. But this, they have a farmer's market in downtown uh, Montgomery, and they've also got farmer's markets in other areas. And it's a, it's a place with a barn, uh, but it's still got an active young people scene. You're losing your young people. They're moving to Austin and to El Paso or to Dallas or to Portland. And one of the reasons is because your neighborhoods, your new neighborhoods, are incapable of attracting and retaining the young people who want something different than their parents had. And that's a problem. The walkable lifestyle. You hear about millennials. They're all so much more social than the rest of us, us Gen Xs. <laughs> They're going to change the world. Well, all right, maybe. But, uh, but whether it's the millennials or whether it's just youth, uh, communities in order, need to be for everyone. And, and, the, and the neighborhoods that you're currently building are just are not enough for everyone. They're, not gonna, they're just not going to compete into the future. This formula that we're talking about is one that's accepted and understood by the builders and the realtors and the developers. And this formula is the same formula, the, just to describe it. Essentially, there's a, there's a main street, then there's a residential attached living, then comes the single family houses, then comes this large farm estates, and then comes the public space or the arroyos. And it's all within a five minute walk every time. So it's, it's people mixing wealthier and, and, and less wealthy 
all living together. And again, that, that formula is one that, is, that feels like sometimes it was invented in Crucis. When you go to the Mesquite neighborhood, it's the same thing. You have this little Main Street opportunities, you have the attached housing, you have the single family houses, and you have the green spaces right in the middle. 